If dizzying heights aren't your favorite, then it's probably a good thing McAllen Fire Lieutenant Robert Guerra is the one perched atop a ladder several stories up at the Wingate Hotel. Luckily, Lieutenant Guerra has been at this for 25 years, and this is just another day on the job. We come to a multi-story building. Uh, we have people that are trapped in a building, and uh, we decide which group of people to, uh, to rescue. If there's one individual, as opposed to six people, we're going to go where the six people are at and we're going to try to pull them out. Obviously, I mean, it's a hard decision, but it's a decision that needs to be made. When seconds count, the McAllen Fire Department wants to make sure their new recruits are fully prepared to make those decisions. This aerial exercise is part of a 16-hour training capsule that includes classroom work and the hands-on ladder truck drills. Fortunately, in the city of McAllen, we haven't, we haven't had a lot of fires where, where rescue with an aerial device has been needed. Um, however, this training provides, you know, a, an excellent opportunity for us to realize how much more difficult it is to perform a rescue with an aerial ladder versus a rescue with a ground ladder or, or just going up a stairwell to get somebody down. With new faces on board, Captain James Farrell says it is vital to keep recruits up to date on their training. We've hired 12 people, 12 new firefighters roughly every year for the last eight years, so we've almost overturned our entire department. So as attrition happens, people lose focus of, you know, how much water is on this particular truck or how much hose. So we felt it was a good idea to go through all the major components of the aerial trucks so that everybody's brought to the same page, you know, as far as how the truck operates and all the, all the, all the amenities that it has on it. His first year on the job, firefighter Rogelio Cárdenas says these hands-on lessons are instrumental. They learn the controls familiarize themselves with the trucks and scale the ladders until they're fully at ease. It makes a big difference because in the book, yeah, you're just reading it, you know, here you're actually hands-on and you, we need this to become second nature to us and since I am new and I have all the experience that my lieutenant does, uh, it, it helps me out a lot because uh, we get a call in the middle of the night or whatever, I don't have time to be second-guessing myself or thinking what my next steps should, should be, it just needs to be a reaction at that point. Lieutenant Guerra says even though he's climbed these steps countless times in preparation for a full-fledged structure fire, there's always something you can learn. The thing is that you don't want to train at an actual scene. It's better that we train now so that when we are at an actual scene where we're trying to rescue somebody, it's second nature. We know that we have to get up there. We know that we have to get our crew on the roof if we need to ventilate. We know that we can go through the roof. We know that we can rescue somebody from a window. We know the distance. We can judge it. So it's better to train right now. Make a mistake right now. This is where we make mistakes. I don't want to make a mistake at a scene, at an actual call. Maneuvering the towering ladder with only a tennis ball to gauge the distance takes patience and persistence. Precision is key. We felt it was important that we practice our proficiency on rescue techniques because there, there's a lot to it. You know, um, we don't want to put the ladders on top of the roof, the aerial ladder on top of the roof. We don't want to go through a window. There's certain things we need to focus on when we're doing training. And as you can see here with the training we're doing, it takes a lot to maneuver the aerial ladder so you don't hit the building. Practice makes perfect. For the City of McAllen, I'm Roxanne Lerma-Casares.